All right. On your warm up, um, by the way, you should have you should have a calculator. You should have a calculator that has your the trig function, sine, cosine, and tangent. If you don't have that, go ahead and grab that now. Okay, and make sure it's on degree mode. Okay. Um, let's do this warm up together. And what I want you to do on the warm up is actually write down the four step process that you always use for turning on the This four step process kind of summarizes everything I've been teaching for the past five days. All right, here's step one. So when, you, when you're dealing with a trigonometry problem, step one is, and I want you to write this down. I'm going to write step one down. I have it in purple here. Step one, identify the acute angle you're going to use. Write that down please. So Lopez, Rojas, make sure you get step one down in there. Uh, yes? Get the calculator done later. Write down, write down step one. Identify the acute angle you're going to use. This is kind of the notes, because warm up is always like a subsection of your notes right now. I'm going to use these four steps for the notes today, but right now I'm, I'm going to, I want you to write them down now on your warm up. Step one, identify the acute angle you're going to use. Okay. Let me do that right now. Let me actually do step one right in front of you for you to see. What is the acute angle I'm going to use? Well, it's right here. Right. 32 degrees. Or, like Sevilla just said, I could use this angle if I wanted to. I'll take 180 minus this angle and this angle, and I'll get this degree. It'll be 58 degrees. Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I'm not going to use a 58 degree angle. I'm going to use the one they gave me, which is the 32 degree angle. But just for a little FYI, you don't have to use this acute angle. You can use this one if you wanted to. That's just a little mental note that you can have registered in your mind. All right, so there's my acute angle. I, I, I highlighted it. That's what I'm going to use. That's step one. Step two. Step two. Identify the sides you're dealing with. There's only three to choose from. So your step one, your step two. Identify the sides that you're dealing with. Are we dealing with the opposite, the adjacent, or the hypotenuse? Look at that's why I put them in quotes. Always opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Which ones are we dealing with? Let's see. So I did step one. I identified the angle. Let me have you finish writing step two down before we proceed. You've been hearing me. You've been hearing me say this often. It's either opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Right here, right here. O, A, or H. Which two am I dealing with in this situation? What what cards do they deal with? Do they deal with rather? This X is what what side in relation to 32? Opposite. That, that's the way I said it. What side is this in relation to the angle, to the acute angle? Well, it's opposite. It's not touching it. So I'm dealing with opposite. And what side is the 13? Adjacent, like it's touching 32. So I'm dealing with those two. Okay. Step three. Two more steps. Okay. I'll write that down. Step three. Based on the side you're dealing with, choose the appropriate trig ratio. This is where you need a Sokotoa. Remember, we're going to dip our sushi in that. Let's dip our sushi. Sokotoa tells us what ratio to use. Okay. What does Sokotoa tell us? Well, 
So Katoa tells us if you have a sine, cosine, and tangent ratio, which one should we choose? We'll also look at the ones we're dealing with. Opposite and adjacent, right? Which one has opposite and adjacent? Tangent. Look here. Opposite and adjacent. So I know I'm going to use tangent, so look at step four, the final step. The final step is form appropriate trig equation and solve for the variable. So write that down. Right, Rosas? Form appropriate trig equation and solve for the variable. So we're going to use tangent because based on the size that I'm dealt with, that's the ratio I should use. Look at the equation I'm going to set up. Tangent 32 is what does Sokoto tell us? Opposite over adjacent. Huh? Opposite is x over adjacent is 13. Look at the trig equation. Now we solve for the variable. Let's get x by itself. Let's get x by itself. Let's multiply both sides by 13. Because that will get x by itself. We want to get rid of that 13. So we're doing the opposite divided by 13 from multiplying. So x is 13 times a tangent of 32. We're going to type that crap in our calculator. 8.1? Sounds good to me. We solve for x, ladies and gentlemen. 8.1. So those four steps are very straightforward. I identified the acute angle, so it's 32 degrees. I'll step one. Step two is I, I identified what, what sides. There's only three to choose from. Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. I'll step two. Step three, based on the side that we're dealing with, I use Sokotoa to figure out we use a tangent. And then step four, let's solve for x. Let's use these steps again. Before I do that, let me give you the quote of the day. So example three, uh, step one. I guess step one, I have it right down the board. Identify the acute angle you're going to use. I shall do that right now. The acute angle I'm going to use is the acute angle they gave me. I think it's 28 degrees. There it is. Okay. Stop me, by the way, if I'm going too fast. Step two, identify the size you're dealing with. You only have three to choose from, you guys. One, two, three. Opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. Let's see which one we're dealing with. Okay, so here's, a, here's the angle. This side, 1.4, is touching the angle, so I know it's adjacent. This side is our unknown. I'll label it x. That side is not touching 28, so that's the opposite. That's step two. Step three. Based on the side you're dealing with, they're right here, the side I'm dealing with, choose the appropriate trig ratio, Sokotoa. What does Sokotoa tell us? What ratio should I use to see which one has... Uh, adjacent and opposite. Sine has these two, cosine has these two, tangent has them. Thank you, Ms. Sevilla. The tangent has opposite and adjacent in it. That's the one I'm going to use. Look at step four. Form appropriate trig equation and solve for the variable. I shall do that right now. So I'm going to use tangent. What, what angle? Well, step one, that's a 28 degree angle. It is. Okay, so Katoa tells me opposite 
over adjacent. So opposite of 28 is x. That's the one I'm looking for, the sign I'm looking for. Adjacent is 1.4. Let's solve for x now. The four steps really simplify the process. I trust you see that. Right, Duncan? Wow. That's right, Duncan, silly. There we go. 1.4, I'm going to multiply both sides by 1.4. Which is really 1.4 over 1. This is gone. I got an equal sign. I got x on the right, it's all you. X on the right, I'm getting rid of that 1.4, and on, on your calculator, 1.4 times the tangent of 28, I'm going to type that crap right into your calculator and see what it spits out. One more time, what is it for me? 0 0.7. That's odd. Why is the side so short and then in one hole? Well, look at it. We're dealing with a small triangle. Look at this long side of 1.4 only. So it makes sense that this is not even one hole. It's 0 0.7. So it does make sense in the context of the problem. Quick four steps. All right? Example four and five. I'm going to put both on the board. You can copy these both down. We're going to do one at a time, obviously. So here's four and here's five. Let's do the four steps on these. Want to copy those down? So, step one. Uh, Ms. Barula, what does step one say again? Could you read step one for me? Here we go. Like I said, uh, example four, the acute angle would be this one. Uh, that's the one I'm going to use. He said it agrees. Step two. So, can you read step two for me? Good. And there's three to choose from O, A, or H. In other words, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. So, let's see, let's see which one I'm dealing with. Which one would this one be? Hypotenuse. And this one, it's not touching 57, so it's opposite. So I'm dealing with opposite and hypotenuse. And that's step two. It's very clear. Step three, Salazar, can you read step three for me? So we're going to choose the appropriate ratio. Let's see, Sokotoa. Let's see. Okay, what ratio, sine, cosine, or tangent deals with opposite and hypotenuse? There it is. Look at opposite and hypotenuse. We're dealing with the sine, the sine ratio. So step four, Rojas, what does step four say? No step four in the fourth step that we wrote down earlier. Did you get the fourth step? Exactly. And the trig, the trig equation is going to involve the ratio of sine. Sine, we abbreviate as sin. Sin 57, sine of 57 is opposite 10.8 over hypotenuse, x. I'm hoping the four step process just really clarifies and just distills what you gotta be doing here. I know the the other math two classes before you really like this four step process, kind of simplified stuff. Uh, yesterday on example one, if you remember from your notes, if you even have it, I told you what to do when the variable is in the denominator. It's very unhelpful when it's in the denominator. We've got to manipulate the equation somehow to get it out of the denominator. Does anybody remember what to do besides Sevilla? I'm coming to you. Now. What do we do to both sides of the equation to get x out of the denominator from yesterday? Does anybody remember? There's something we do. Don't put you with it. Stay with me. Let's get x out of the denominator because it does not help when x is in the, in the denominator. Anybody not remember what you're doing? Add x. Close. You're on the right track. Try a different operation instead of adding. What's the opposite of division? What's the opposite of dividing? 
So we have to say today. Right, so the opposite of dividing by x is we're going to multiply by x. Okay. Okay. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other. Pick this up. Okay. The x's cancel each other out. So the good thing, we don't want x on the denominator. So I have 10.8 on the right, and I have x times the sine of 57 on the left. Cool. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. What should we do now to get x alone? Add what? Adding would be the opposite of subtracting. Right now, this is really x times the sine of 57. So I want to get rid of the sine of 57 and get x by itself. Let's divide it. Let's divide both sides by the sine of 57. Because remember, sine of, the sine of 57 is just some decimal. If you type that in your calculator, it's some, some infinite decimal. It's a number. So x x times a number is equal to 108. So to get x by itself, let's get rid of this number. So let's divide both sides by the sine of 57. It's some number. Notice that. that can't, it's gone. Anything divided by itself is 1. So I have 1x equaling 10.8 divided by the sine of 57. Now you'll type that crap in your calculator. Right there. 11.5? So 10.8 10 divided by the sine of 57. Let me just double check on that one. Let me type that on my. 10.8 divided by the sine of 57. Watch this. I want to make sure I have degree mode. Look at how it's degrees. This would be radians on the upper left. I want to make sure DEG degree is showing. Still talking? All right. So degrees. Uh, 10.8. Yeah, 10.8 divided by the sine of 57. Sine 57. Look at the way I'm punching it in. I'm gonna close the parenthesis. 10.8 divided by sine 57. And I'm going to run the nearest tenth place. So the eight digit is in the tenth place. I look to the right of the eight. That's five or bigger. So I'm going to, my final answer will be 12.9. So x is approximately 12.9. Simple four step process. I had to show the play the four step process so you can copy it. I'll put the slide up there. All right, last example for example five. You guys are doing good. Before I put you guys on a race right now. Here we go. Example five. Um, Ms. Sanchez, what is step one? Can you read step one for me? Okay, here's the one I'm going to use. The, uh, the uh, acute angle I'm going to use is right here, 47 degrees. Okay. All right. Step two, Ms. Sanchez. <coughs> Ms. Sanchez. What's step two say? Good. So I have three options, O, A, or H. What am I dealing with? Let's see. This one's touching 47, so that's the adjacent. This one is opposite the 90 degree angle, so that's the hypotenuse. So I'm dealing with adjacent and hypotenuse. Step three, uh, Rosas, what does step three say? What does step three say? Nice. Based on the size I'm dealing with. So the size, of, yeah, go, based on the size I'm dealing with, which are adjacent and hypotenuse, I'm going to choose the appropriate trig ratio. So Katoa, 
the adjacent and hypotenuse is going to be the cosine. There's your adjacent and hypotenuse. So I'm going to use a cosine function to write my equation, which is step four. So the cosine of 47 degrees is equal to the adjacent, adjacent over hypotenuse. So the adjacent to 47 is x, hypotenuse is 3. Let's rock and roll. There we go. Let's get rid of the 3 because I want to get x by itself. So I'm multiplying both sides by 3. This is gone. So I have x equaling 3 times the cosine of 47. So 3 times the cosine of 47. Let's do this here. 3 cosine 47. Look at the way I wrote it in my calculator. I don't have to put the times because the calculator automatically interprets, interprets this as 3 times the cosine of 47. I'm going to equal. I'll run to the, the tens place. So it's uh, 0. This is not 5 or bigger. The 4 is not 5 or bigger, so it's going to be 2.0. My final answer. So x is 2.0.